This video is on the topic of dealing with distractions in the practice of mindfulness, both in everyday life and also in mindfulness meditations. So I'm going to introduce an analogy. Most people are familiar with smartphones and tablets and there are very often apps functioning in the background. So in this analogy, it's like that. The mind is like that. It's got mind applications running in the background. It's got stories, uh, ideas, projects, uh, maybe even like a video uh, running in the background. Now with an app on a phone or a tablet, there's a certain button you can press and it shows you all the apps that are on. And you sometimes are quite surprised by how many are running in the background. Well, the analogy with mindfulness is that periodically you, you just, as it were, check what's running in the background. So what ideas, what preoccupations, what arguments, what obsessions, what's going on? And this sort of process of, as it were, checking what mind apps are running in the background is very important and very useful. Uh, there might be uh, a way in which you get a sense of there are very unuseful, habitual stories and arguments going on and they, they don't serve you in any way. They don't serve your practice, they don't serve your life. And basically, uh, when you, as it were, swipe them away, it's more to the bin. <laughs> and there might be some themes which you do need to look at at some point. So the swiping them away is more to memory to be looked at later. And then there might be some background apps, mind apps, that are actually about what you're doing. They're more in the background, but they're relevant. So you, as it were, bring them forward and start to actually engage with them in relationship to what you're doing. So these three areas, uh, delete to the bin, definitely a no, and then no, but not now, and then yes, and let's see if they can be included and incorporated into what I'm doing right now. So this analogy of the apps is, 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 is always here as a, a reminder. We have phones, so we can just remember, oh yes, I turn on my phone, check what apps there are. Let me just check what mind apps are going on. One of the functions or uses of this approach to mind apps is that you can definitely say no. You get used to saying no. No, enough already. That's been going on for years. It, it just goes on and on and on. No. And you just have this sense of an alternative creative focus. No, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on whatever it is. Cooking, communication, awareness of the breath, if if it's a meditation. So there's a creative alternative. It might be a particular train of thought that you decide that you're going to focus on. But there's a creative alternative to the thing which is just going on in the background which doesn't serve you in any way. So in this way there is a strategy, a clear strategy for noticing for what you could say in more ordinary terms is distractions. Because when you're actually, <clears throat> for example, focusing on the breath and a nap, mind app opens, it's a distraction. It will take you away, probably. So you lose the vivid engagement with the sense of the breath, the body, uh, that you had decided that you were going to focus on. And then you can go, what is that? Is it just not useful, not relevant, relevant, or can it be used? 
And so you have a clear criteria, a clear way of working. And you can actually say no. So in this way, in the course of your everyday mindfulness, you're checking and adjusting, swiping away, bringing in if it's useful. So in this way, you have a clearing process, a clearing of background uh, mind activity that in no way serves what you're actually doing at the moment.